I'm Jane Turner from Write With Jane, and it's my pleasure to introduce you to Nicole Davidson, whose book, How to Put the Balance into Your Business, is really important from the point of view of the fact that many of us will overwork if we're not conscious about it. So Nicole, welcome. And thank you, you Jane. More about the book, because as I say, I think it's really important. Yeah. So when I first came up with the idea of writing a book, originally I wanted to do it from the perspective of employees because I do believe in creating workplaces where everyone has the ability to fly because I think that's important from a personal perspective, but I think it's also important from a business perspective and I think businesses have a responsibility to create environments in which people can do that. But what I found was in my mind was that people would be going, and I know from my personal experience, you know, having been an employee for a really long time in various places, that you can often feel quite powerless because it's all very well to sit there and think you want to make changes or you want to show up in a certain way. But if the culture of the workplace doesn't support it, then it can make it really, really hard. And I think that's where a lot of people become quite disheartened and sort of give up and lose that drive to actually bring all of who they are to the workplace. So then I was thinking that really we need business owners to be well we need business owners to know themselves and understand themselves so that they can consciously create a culture in which everyone can fly and there are no losers. And this is the part that gets me when I hear of businesses who don't treat their people well, who don't understand that their people are their greatest asset but it starts with us. So how can a business owner go and do that when they don't understand themselves? So that's really why I decided to go down that angle to help business owners understand themselves. Fantastic. Because in a sense, if you're at the top of the pyramid and you you, you own the business, so you have the most at stake, mm. but you're often in a bit of an echo chamber because who is going to be brave enough to say, look, I think, you know, as an employee that this you know, should be, should, shouldn't be about bravery as I think about it though. Cause if someone's got a great suggestion, mm. but it all comes down to the culture, doesn't it? Is it okay does. to make a suggestion? Yeah. Mm. And when you've been in a workplace where you've gone in and you felt that you can make a difference and you felt that you have a lot to contribute and then it's shut down all the time, you stop contributing. Mm -hmm. And so I have read it, I have seen it um, somewhere that you really don't need to be afraid of the people who are speaking up. You have to be afraid of the people who aren't because if they're not speaking out and giving their opinions, whatever, then you have no idea what they're thinking. You have no idea um, really what their focus is, I suppose, in terms of what they're bringing to the table. So it really does pay to create environments in which people feel safe to express themselves. And, you know, there's that lovely saying, it's not really a lovely saying, I'm being sarcastic, but, oh, this is the way we do things around here. Oh, yes. You know, it just shuts people down. Mm -hmm. And so people, you come in and we've all been there, you know what it's like, you come in and you're you know, you've, you've got ideas and whatever, and then you kind of conform. And I, I do sort of see workplaces as, you know, we, we, we are these expansive beings, like we're magnificent. When you think about what our bodies do, what our minds do, the energy that we have when we're in the right environment, I will say that. But then when you think about it, we, we have all these people who come into a workplace and what do people need to leave behind in order to come into that workplace. And so then we have the box. Okay. So everyone's this magnificent being, and then we come in here. So how do we create a workplace where the walls aren't like this? You have to have a container. You can't just let everyone go off willy nilly, but how do you create it so that the, the boundaries and the container can kind of expand when it needs to, to cater for the magnificence of the energy that's within it? 
Mm, I love the sound of this. And it is, it's all about energy, isn't it? It is. And what is the totally. impact of kind of squeezing people into a box that they're way too big for? What's the long term, uh, let alone the short term impact of that? You know, what's the loss? And from a, oh. you know, just from a health point of view, that's, that can't be good. No, but well, I think when you think about, you know, we have an epidemic of depression and anxiety. And to me, that is the absence of energy. Oh, yes. Nicely put. Okay. Right? It's the absence of energy. So, you know, I just finished doing a, a 12-week group program with a corporate team with a real estate and it was about true happiness. And the first part of it was life-giving energy. And if we think about it in terms of that life-giving energy, not just any kind of energy, life-giving energy, does this make me feel alive? Mm. Right? Does this make me feel alive? And if that's our barometer, that's really easy to say yes or no. And then we can be in the moment knowing whether something has to shift, whether we have to change our focus. It doesn't always mean we have to make huge changes. They can just be small changes within us that can kind of just put us on the right path. But also in terms of the cost, when you think about businesses and the cost to them of replacing people when people leave, it's also in terms of people being present in the workplace, but oh, yeah. not really not really productive. Mm-hmm. And so we've got people taking, um, I mean, I just spoke to a, a client of mine and um, you know, she was away at a retreat, a health retreat. And, you know, there was somebody who'd been on stress leave for six months. So there's a huge cost. Huge cost on huge so cost many levels. On so yeah. many levels. And I just, I, I personally think on a moral level, mm. it's wrong. Yeah. And I, I can see how grounded you are in terms of the importance of that message. And mm. hence that you you took the trouble to write a book. Yeah. Yeah, I get mm. this. Now, what was the motivation for writing the book, just from your own point of view? Was it to sort of build a bridge between yourself and potential clients? Was it to get the the information out of the head and really distilled and onto the page? You know, I, I get a lot of really interesting rationales from people when I ask mm. that question. Yeah. Mine was really to connect with um, potential clients so that they knew what I was about and they knew what I stood for. Um, so I think that was also when I talk about the fact that I decided to do it for business owners, that's where I felt I could have the biggest impact mm -hmm. because as you say, you know, it starts at the top and the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So how do we then go in at that level so that the, um, the benefits and the understandings can kind of then filter down through. And I think that's where I felt I could have the most impact. So yeah, that's that's that was my motivation for writing the book. I had no intention of writing a book. An opportunity came up, and I kind of just said yes. Um, so I had no, had never ever ever been on my radar. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Never ever 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 in a million years thought I would write a book. Mm. And then, can you say a little bit about how helpful or not? the book has been in that context of uh, of you connecting with potential clients look i think i think and i have said this to you jane and i'll say this i'll say this now i feel like i kind of wrote it in a way before i was ready yes you have said that That's... and i'll just speak about that honestly because i think that i was going through a really interesting time in my life and it was a real period of transition you know i'd left my teaching career um, I'd sort of gone into coaching, um, delivering a, a program I was licensed to deliver. Um, you know, I'd, I'd lost several members of my family, like grandparents and auntie, like in a, in a really short amount of time. So really my foundations had kind of been rocked. And I think I was at a stage where I was trying to create the new me. Mm, interesting. And so, and so I'm so glad I wrote it. And as I think I've had kind of times where I've fallen in and out of love with my book, you know what I mean? Because uh -huh, I, think, I, I think, I think, I think part of it just also for me represents the time as well. So there's, it's kind of tinged with that. However, I do absolutely 
Um, and I'm really grateful that I did write it because it does speak to my experience and it does speak to the issues that we face. And so I'm really proud and I'm really grateful. That's my contribution. Um, but, you know, if I'm being honest, I think that is my reason why it's a bit of a two-edged, double-edged sword, just because of the memories it kind of brings up as well. So that's my work and that's my journey that I kind of need to take what's good in it and utilise that. Yes, yes, mm. I love that. And we also talked about the potential and, and the ease with which you can update the material. Right. Well, because what a fast-changing world we're working in, we're yeah. living in. Yeah. And that's a great thing to have done. You've done the hard yards mm. and as often as you need to or whenever appropriate, it's easy enough then to repurpose the material or just, you know, tweak it slightly, frankly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's a great idea, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now tell people where they can find you and where they can find the book in particular. So to get a copy of the book, you're welcome to email me at nicole at growth to success.com.au and you can also find me on LinkedIn under Nicole Davidson and my website is growth to success.com.au. Fantastic. Thank you, Nicole.